Well, hello, hello, hello. Great afternoon, everyone. Welcome to Virtual Coffee Break with Tanisha. How's everybody doing? Today, uh, we will be having a discussion about week four. We are in week four already of the 40 Day, 40 Nights, No Limit Success Academy, All Out Massive Action. This time has flown by. Can y'all believe we in week four already? It is already September 19th. We're like almost done with this month. But for me, it feels like we just got back from convention. <laughs> I'm still riding on that high. Director Short, do you feel like we, do you feel like you still just got back from convention or does it feel like? Yes. <laughs> yes. I feel like we was there last week. Yeah. Right. I'm still after me too me too awesome 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 so welcome everyone hey katie erica martina kim michelle tamela hey benita devoris is in the building hey miss abram how are you hey karen rochelle jean i see you denise gail mary jane delta shamika i hope i ain't leave nobody out bethany driving home to let the dog out all right so we are first of all what have you done that we could celebrate what have you done to move your business forward since uh we last got together i'm seeing a lot of mtgs um and promotions in the no limit success academy which is really really exciting but what have you done recently that we could celebrate to move your business forward. I like to share Tanisha. Yes. I, last Wednesday or Thursday, I can't remember now which day, but anyway, it became Silver Builder. So I raised Ooh, up wait, where my fan? Wait a minute. Wait, wait. Yes. Congratulations. Yeah, Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. That is awesome. So Bethany, you know, we just running the gold, right? It's clap, clap, next exactly. level. Exactly. That yeah, that's is my goal. awesome. Congratulations. Miss Karen. Hello, 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 everybody. Hi. I am excited to announce that I signed up a new business partner. Ooh, congratulations. Yes. For the new VP. She's new. She's very excited. She's already uh, booked her first cruise, group cruise for her um, wow. birthday next year in June. And she's very excited about that. She's want to focus on the travel, but I told her from a Tanisha Burp was in my ear. I'm not going to let you miss this. That's awesome. <laughs> you can focus on travel, but we are in a place where momentum is about to happen. And $20 a month, if you can afford that, you can position yourself for millions. And when you're ready to get that, come back and do it, I'll be here to help you. And she was smart enough to know that, yeah, that just makes sense. So she is in both sides. But right now she's focusing on travel and she's going to have a travel party uh, at the end of this week. Uh, I'm sorry, a launch. She's going to launch her business because she's thinking she's going to get clients. But yeah. I already know she's going to get clients and business partners. That's right. So the center of influence. She has so many people on Facebook following her. She has three or four different businesses going on. She makes shoes. She um, coaches entrepreneurs. I mean, yeah. she does all of this stuff. So, you know, they're going to want to, they're going to, and when she start advertising that cruise, they're like, oh, I want to go and, and I want to do what you do. You're booking this cruise. So I already told her it's going to happen. It's going to happen. Absolutely. Now, Karen, who's your director? Michael Gallon. I saw you. Oh, that's right. Yes. Yes, that's right. I had to I had to remember. Awesome. Have you introduced your new business partner to Michael, Mr. Gallon? Yes. Good. yes. Actually, he did the three-way. And then when she got in, uh, she he did the welcome call. Excellent. Excellent. Good job. Congratulations. Martina says she had three people on a webinar at one time, which is huge for her. Um, because they usually <coughs> They usually say they'll hop, hop on, but don't. 
and she has a sign up date for one of them. Congratulations. Yes, yes. Good job, Martina. Uh, Miss Jean. Always have trouble getting on, but hello. I um, just wanted to say, I guess what uh, helped me this past week was adding more friends because I put a post out and I got some hits on it. I was able to respond and messenger get going a little further. So um, uh, new friends are good. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. You should, everyone should be um, adding, you know, five to 10 new friends a day. Five to 10 new friends a day. That's going to keep your algorithm going, keep your content fresh. So you definitely want to do that. Five to 10 new friends a day qualified friends not just anybody we want sharp ambitious driven professionals right excellent 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 good job rochelle she's inviting to the blitz and following up good job working your business working your business that's what it's about um again psa planet marketing has a new updated presentation, not new, but it's updated um, with the amount that has been paid out in commission so far. So if you do not have the September 11th version of the presentation, please download that today, especially because you guys are doing launches and PBR. So if you're using the presentation, we want you to use um, the one with the most recent information um, with commissions paid out today. All right. So we are in week four, week four of this six week bootcamp. There's only two more weeks to go. So we are more than halfway full, but you know what my first question is and just type it in the chat. How many of you have watched the week four training video? Doom, doom, doom. Good job, good job, good job. <laughs> I saw uh, Karen said she watched it twice. She said, I'm going to make sure Tanisha don't get on me this week. <laughs> Karen watched it for somebody who hasn't watched it. I love it. I love it. I love it. Okay, so here's the next question. Y'all know y'all got to be honest, right? Who has not watched the week four boot camp training video just type in the chat i have not watched yet Okay, so we got three people. Miss Erica, how come you haven't watched it yet? I watched it based off of my time management. So what happened with your time management? Um, I my I, I don't want to make excuses, so I just want to say time Just management. go on and say it. I, I'm going to let you know it's an excuse anyway, but this is how we grow, right? <laughs> It's just time management. It's just being, you know, organized. I'm doing some things with my son where I have to take him out of school and I'm in the process of putting him in another school. So he's with me all day. And just just trying to work around inconveniences. That's it. Okay. So what you going to do this week so that that doesn't happen next week? Get back to the calendar. Okay. And prioritizing. That that's it right there. You got to prioritize because we all have the same 24 hours in a day, right? We can't make time. Yeah. We can't find time. So all we can do is prioritize the time that we have. So I am confident, Erica, that you are going to make that adjustment this week with prioritizing and getting back to your calendar 
so that you can work towards getting everything that you want out of this business. Yes, thank you. Absolutely. Miss Christina, how come you haven't watched the week four video yet? Mm. Mm. my thing is with my kids man I've been spending too much time focusing on myself in this business and trying to grow and they took advantage of that of me not paying attention too much to them and so they lashed out trying to get my attention and started doing bad things so I kind of got mm. a little bit had to go ahead and re re redirect them basically and focus on family issues first okay so let me ask you this question Christina what was your why for starting the business To basically um, spend more quality time with the kids, taking them places to see the world and, and to make more money so I don't have to be out and about, you know, um, at work doing my other job and, you know, just doing everything and everything and just being there focusing on the children and Absolutely. just being more around more. Exactly. So, Christina, what you have to remember is not to make your why your why not. That was the perfect example. And I thank you for sharing because that is the perfect example of don't let your why become your why not, right? So we can't say, oh, I'm doing this business for my kids so I can spend more time with them. And then you use your kids as the reason for why you're not doing the things you need to do in your business, right? I couldn't do it because my kids, blah, 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 blah. So every time you catch yourself doing that, you got to remember that the the excuse that you're giving yourself or why you didn't do what you needed to do in the business is the exact reason of why you need to do it in the business, right? So Christina, what you have to do is, and I understand you had to make an adjustment to spend more time with the kids to get them on track, but use your calendar. You still need to, you schedule time for the kids and you schedule time to do the stuff that you need to do in the business. Don't throw the calendar out the window, right? Because you're dealing with the kids. Everything still needs to get scheduled this way. Nothing falls through the cracks. The kids are gonna get what they need, but then you're gonna be able to do what you need to do so that you can put yourself in a better position where you have more time with the children. Does that make sense, Christina? Yes, it does. Yes, it does. And the reason why this is because I haven't been mastering my time management. I'm like kind of a little bit all chaotic and all over the place. And I'm trying to do it. Sometimes I do it, but then it just something comes and knocks it down and redirects it. And I have to mm -hmm. readjust things and then I don't have time to readjust the calendar. And it's just it gets all. So I'm trying to do time. that. I'm trying to take control. Yeah, yes. you got you got to make time to readjust the schedule. Um, that that. That's the whole point of it. You're not going to be able to manage your schedule immediately. It's something that you have to consistently work at. And then over time, um, you'll be able to, you'll just get better at it. I got to step away for a moment. Shamika, take over for a second, please. Yes, yes. Hi, Tanisha. Oh, Lord, yeah, I see. Hi, Tanisha. <laughs> so oh, can I say something? Um, can I say something on that um, note? Okay, so I um, okay, so I just wanted to say when it comes to the kid aspect, uh, Christina, don't feel like don't get overwhelmed with it. Just um, what I do with my kid. Can y'all hear me? Uh, what I do with my kid is i let her know like look mommy doing this for us mommy is working and i keep reinstalling that in her because kids might feel like we ignoring them we're not paying attention to them things like that i give her a bath i feed her we cook together anything and then i have her sitting next to me with her tablet or her homework and i'm working my business too understand that our kids gonna get older and they're gonna complain about something that we did something that we didn't do anyway you know what i'm saying so you got to figure out what you want them to complain about they gonna complain about something so my thing is i'm creating a better life for us so you got to just look at it like that and just learn to talk to your kids and not at them i try to when i tell my daughter like what i'm doing she does calm down she don't be all fussy like she would. I'd be like, girl, I'm working. I'm not ignoring you. I'm not just talking to my friends. I'm working. That's all I want to say. 
I love it. I love it. Alana says she can't come off of mute. She says life has been lifing, but excuses are the essence of nothing. That is so true. She said prioritizing is her issue. And so she has to work on that. So it, it, at the end of the day, that's what it comes down to prioritizing. If it's important to you, you will find a way. And if it is not, you will find an excuse. But you get to choose. Are you going to find a way or are you going to find an excuse? I mean, that's what it honestly comes down to. And there are so, and when you plug in, you're going to hear, like plug into the meetings and the Zooms and the team meetings and stuff like that. You're going to hear some people who have some really big challenges, but they didn't let those challenges stop them. And when you hear them, you're going to realize that the little stuff y'all complaining about ain't nothing. We talking about like serious stuff that people have gone through. The whole thing with dealing with the kids and that's almost every parent is going to deal with that. That's that's not major. I'm talking about some real serious stuff. You know, there's people who go through, you know, domestic abuse situations and they still finding a way to work their business because they're like the business is what's going to help me get out of this situation like that's some real stuff you got to keep going i've heard so many um people or not so many but i've heard many several people talk about they were homeless and they were still working this business because they knew this business would be the solution to getting them off the street. So you talking about people who don't have a roof over their head, they don't have access to a refrigerator to keep food in, but they still work in this business. So you gotta keep going no matter what. Miss Karen. I, I just wanted to say to Christina and also to the, the young lady that spoke, Miss Shaney. Shaney, you know, my kids are grown now and my grandkids don't live with me. But when I was in another network marketing business a long time ago, when my kids were younger, I did everything uh, with them because I, you know, in education, I value that. But when they went to bed, I worked and they had a strict bedtime. And what we're talking about, you know, I know some things you can't do when kids are asleep, like calling people and stuff that you don't want to call too late. But watching a video, that's a good time to watch a video when the kids are asleep. Yep. Or send a message. You can send a message late in Messenger. It's, it's kind of understood. Yeah. They're going to read it when it's convenient for them. Right. So you can still work the business. You can, you know, if you live on the East Coast and it's late at night, you prospect the people on the West Coast. It's still early where they are. Right, so there's always, instead of, this is what I want y'all to work on. This is, what's, this is what will help people who have the challenges like Christina. It's so easy to say why you can't. So when you catch yourself giving an excuse or allowing an excuse to stop you from what you know you need to do because it's on your calendar, it's on your calendar, so you know you need to do it. You got to ask yourself, how can I get this done? Not, oh, I can't get this done because this is happening at this time, right? So it's like eight o'clock at night, you have it on your calendar, you're supposed to be prospecting or following up, but all hell is breaking loose with the kids, right? They're being a distraction or the, the spouse is being a distraction or you got home late because you were stuck in traffic and you haven't even started dinner yet, right? But yet this is your prospecting time. So instead of just throwing it out the window and just say, well, can't do my prospecting because I got to cook dinner right now. You got to ask yourself, how can I do what I'm scheduled to do at this time? How can I make this happen? What can I do? Maybe that night you just order out pizza instead of cooking so you can continue to do what you're supposed to do at your scheduled time right there's always something that that you can do put them kids on time out <laughs> for an hour give them a book to read something right 
but also have a backup plan for when stuff comes up so that you're prepared. There you go. Amira said cereal night. Exactly. All right. I buy stuff you could, they could just put in the oven. Shoot. Might be, might be P and J night. Just can I, can I say something real quick? Me, the Absolutely. Kids don't love Absolutely. Christina. Okay. Um, I do want to state this. Okay. Because, um, I've always been the homemaker. My main job, you know, my job that I do is I'm a caregiver. So I always care. And everybody in my house knows I care. So when I've been starting this business, everybody's been seeing that my caring for them and catering to them has lacked a little bit, even though I've been doing it, but it's not been so intense as it was before. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I know that's the reason because they're lashing out on that because of the change of environment of me not being so on them as I was before, because I'm yes. actually on myself now and not them you understand yeah. what i'm saying i'm actually focusing on me and thinking about myself and Absolutely. not them first right now you know what i'm saying I and the only reason why i do that is because i'm 40 years old i mean like i ain't got that much time they still got a long life ahead of them i gotta think about myself they're gonna leave me in a couple years and i'm gonna be all there alone doing what having right. what you know <laughs> i get it christina let me ask you this when you started the business did you have a family meeting to let everybody know what you were doing, why you were doing it, how it was gonna benefit the family and what you needed them to do to support you. Yes, actually I did. And the main person that made me take this point and in leading into this business was my husband and my children were all supportive to see look, the ones that are giving me the problem is the 13 year old. And she was like super supportive because she's all about woman power, strong and, and, and being an entrepreneur. And she's an entrepreneur herself. She's 13 years old and does hair. And I'm trying to lead her in the right path. But, you know, it just happens because like they're teens, they go through emotions. And it's like, you know, she even told me, we don't even have special date nights together. We don't have a connection. And I was like, oh, great. I had to pause for a moment and give that girl constant connection because she's like in a prime age of discovering herself and stuff like that. And I'm at my point that I'm discovering myself with my business. So I'm like, oh, you know, so that's what got me a little derailed. But I, I have hope. I have faith. I keep praying. You know what I'm saying? And keep motivating with positive vibes and, and everything. But you know what I'm saying? But like, I'm on it now. Like, to be honest, the result of this, because I saw Monday morning's IMV and seeing um, um, Bradley and um, I forgot his name. I'm sorry. Um, I seen them on the IMV kind of made me go ahead and get my great, you know, get my greatness out. And to be honest, out of that, I got four people that are the prospects that are going to be joining the Zooms tonight. Nice, nice. So Christina, here's what I would do. You sit down with your daughter, you pull out your calendar, and the two of you together, you schedule mommy daughter dates. That's all you gotta do. You schedule the mommy daughter dates. And so that she knows exactly when these dates are, and you guys plan out what you're gonna do, give her something to look forward to, and honor the dates. Never break the mommy daughter dates. Never break the mommy daughter dates. That is what you need to do. And she will treasure those times. I remember um, my mom used to schedule in mommy daughter time with me, and I always look forward to it. She was a nurse. She worked two jobs, so she was, you know, absent a lot of times. So I always and I remember growing up. One of my favorite places. We were in New York. We used to go to the McDonald's that had the playhouse. You know, we had the balls and all, and that was like my favorite time. And then after that, we would go window shopping because my mom really couldn't afford to, you know, take me shopping to buy stuff, but we would go window shopping and I would just dream like, oh, I want this, I want to get this one day, I'm gonna have that one. And I always treasured those times. And I mean, these kids are growing up so fast. And, and actually I'm preaching to the choir right now because I need to schedule some mommy son time, but. My son's not begging to spend time with me because he has his computer and he's always playing video games. But I need the mommy son time for me more than for him because I feel like, oh my gosh, he's growing so fast, right? I just bought my son his school pants for in August and they're already high waters. I'm like, it ain't even a month yet. It's barely a month and these pants are not fitting. Like, what are we doing, right? So yeah, so... For you parents out there who are uh, having that mommy guilt 
um, or your kids are acting out because you're not spending the time with them, right? You have an, another new love, right? And they're feeling a little jealous. Make sure you schedule some special time just for them. It doesn't even have to be every week. It could be every other week, but make it special and stick to it and make sure when you're having that time with them that you are not on your phone doing anything. Be present during that time. Don't be trying to multitask during your kid's time, all right? Um, Amira? Hi, okay. So I am a, uh, I was originally a stay-at-home mom. I ha I'm a homeschool mom now. My youngest daughter is 14. And she is, you know, she's trying to start every business that she can think of. She just ordered a um, guitar off of Amazon because she now she needs to play acoustics and all this other stuff. And I just want to say that they, they will say that, that they miss their mom time. They will say that they want that time. And what helped me was I, she's really good with TikTok and stuff like that. So right now she's not only am I scheduling time with her, but I'm like, hey, can you help me with this little bit of TikTok stuff? Because I don't know nothing about this stuff. I would prefer to be on Facebook. I barely like Instagram. Like, show me because, you know, I got this one and I have this one on. So now she's kind of a part of my business. Like, she's helping me. Like, she actually has a little bit of a role. And, you know, when I post, if I post a TikTok video after she's given me 100 million lessons on it, then she can say, oh, you know, me and mom did that. Hey, she might be in the back. She might be recording it. You know, she might pop in and say, hey, you know, or something like that. So also, don't forget to kind of engage her a little bit in it, it's, especially since you said she's already a business. She, she has her own business. Maybe y'all can collaborate and do something. Maybe you can create an event or something and she be involved in it and you be involved in it and y'all could do together. Mm -hmm. You know, something like that. Maybe you can, especially since she's business minded, she should understand a little bit better about what you got going on and what you're trying to push through. She might even have some advice for you because of the way these kids are. They know stuff that we don't know. And millennials are what? The number one traveling. They're making the most money for us right now. So mm -hmm. we can go ahead and take those, take those ideas too. I love and, you that. Know, I'm a, I'm a, I've been a stay-at-home mom. I'm a homeschooling mom. So I've been parenting on steroids for so many years. So if you have any questions, just reach out to me and I'll be happy to help you. Awesome. Awesome. Love that idea. Get the kids involved, especially with our product being travel. They could also help you with some itineraries, right? Get them involved. Maybe, maybe let them do the, you know, a certification. I mean, it's all just videos and answering questions or whatever, so that they can help you, um, you know, on the travel side of the business. Right. And there's also, you know, fam trips that, um where you can bring a non-agent companion with you so how about working you know together with your child and say you know i really want your help with this you know let's find a fam trip that we can go on together and we could both take notes and you know then when y'all get back from the fam trip create a group trip and market that so yeah there's a lot to do with that all right so delta did i see your hand up earlier I don't want to miss anybody. Here we go. So, uh, yes, my hand was up. I just wanted to, my heart, um, it, it, it really, I really understand what she was saying. I only have one daughter and I did, you know, when she was growing up, did the, the, the have that special time, mother, daughter time. But what I was thinking, I think you just hit on it, that, when you can actually, I don't know the age of your children, but when you can pull them into what it is you're doing and show them. So in the long run, as they mature and get older and see what it is that you're doing, you're doing it on the behalf of them mm -hmm. that they'll get to grow into their understanding where they may not understand. Now they can grow into that understanding because they can see because, 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 I love you and you you are who you are, part of me. This is why I'm doing what I'm doing. So at some point, they'll get to the point where they'll understand. That's what I want. I understand that, you know, um, when you have more than just one, you're dealing with multiple, you know, um, 
not say attitudes, but you know, different individuals, personalities. Mm-hmm. personalities. So yeah, you have to, you know, get to a point. But my suggestion to you is this: pray number one. <laughs> but just um, get that as far as you know your calendar, because as, as um, Director Burke say. That calendar is really important. And when you can schedule those times, then you, and, and, and if you can hold yourself accountable for what you put on that calendar, especially dealing with your children, you can hold yourself accountable and make sure you 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 when you 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 keep abreast of you know what you have on your calendar, make sure you you hold yourself to it. And then like they'll get to a point where they'll understand. But that's that's what I wanted to share. Absolutely. Here's another suggestion. Come up with something that you can all do as a family once you hit your next promotion goal, right? So if your goal is, you know, your next promotion goal is, you know, one star director or, you know, 2020 or something, set some type of thing that y'all can do as a family. Maybe it's take a trip somewhere um, that, okay, when I hit DIT, you know, we're all gonna go get a cabin in Tennessee, you know, and and spend the weekend or something, right? When I hit one star director, okay, we going to Disney, right? Or we're gonna take a cruise or something like that. And so now you get the buy-in of everyone to help support you and push you so that you can get to your next promotion and make sure you make good on whatever it is that you say you're gonna do. And then you will always have their support. Um, and I saw, I think what Cynthia was saying, her her, her issue is her spouse. <laughs> She's like, kids are cool. It's the husband for me. Cynthia, you want to talk about it? Because I'm sure yes, other people indeed. have it. <laughs> yes, indeed, I do. I've been in this business now since 2016. Everybody was in my household was excited about it because it was travel. Who isn't excited about travel? Mm -hmm. But after a while, uh, my kids were good because they were still traveling, going to convention with me, things of that nature. But now my husband, now that I have reinvested back into my business, he's like, oh, you're always on a call. Oh, you always have an event to go to. Um, I thought I was doing something great by bringing him with me to convention, but that was the worst thing I could have done because, oh, are you going to spend time with me? Are you going to? So we have date night set, which is another thing I thought I was going <laughs> to be good with, but he still wants more. And I'm like, what do you think, you know? is providing some of these other things that our paycheck doesn't provide right it's the the commission and um the referral fees from planet marketing i don't know what else to do with them right okay so i'm gonna let uh, director short speak um but let me say this anytime uh there needed to be i don't know what conversation you had with your husband about convention but there definitely needs to, you need to manage their expectations because there's other spouses who have not been supportive of their spouse in the business. And we say, bring them to convention so that they can understand it, so that they can meet the leadership and see what it's all about. And then once the spouse get there, now they lit and like, yeah, let's go. I love this. This is great, great culture. But if you brought your husband to convention and he was expecting to have all this time with you and you did not manage his expectation that, um, you know, whether it be, listen, we gonna go into convention, we'll go a couple of days early so we could have our time together, but from, you know, from thir- Friday to Saturday, I'm gonna be busy or- And that was done, I did that. I told, oh. and this isn't his first convention. He's met Mr. Bradley, Mr. White, Mr. Moore. He's even met you guys. So I'm like, (laughs) he already knew. All right, let's see what Director Short has to contribute. Director Short. Woo. So look, this this is for my single, my single colleagues over here, okay? Because, okay, when I first started this business, I was dating. 
And he said the exact same thing that her husband was saying. He was like, every time I look up, you on Zoom. You always on Zoom. Zoom this. You don't care about nothing but Zoom. I mean, he was hating big. Let me come up here. Look, he was hating so big, y'all. And I was like, well, because this is when I had really started learning the compensation plan. This is when I had watched your video, Understanding the Matrix. When I watched that video, I couldn't even sleep night so i was like oh well i don't know what to tell you homeboy you know what i'm saying i look i stopped dating because of this business because i knew what i had to do is more important to him and a man is like a kid sometimes and they want all your attention all your attention that's not support to me you know what i'm saying when i look for a mate that's not support if i tell you i gotta do this we got 365 days in a year you can't let me shine for three days. We only got convention for three days. You know what I'm saying? And then convention, you do get pulled everywhere. Like a lot of people think when I go to convention, they're like, oh, you're going to have fun. I'm going to work. I'm going to network. I'm going to meet people. I'm going to get poured into. I'm going to pour into people. Convention is amazing. Mm -hmm. So if I had somebody at convention and they don't grasp for it, like I said, she married, but for my single ladies that's on the line, if you're dating somebody and they don't understand the culture and what you're trying to do, you need to reevaluate that situation. I'm just being very, very transparent and honest because we got more stuff to do than just a boyfriend. Think about the boyfriend we had at 16, at 18, at 23. We don't know where they at. We can't, we don't know where they at right now. You know what I'm saying? Don't miss the opportunity of a lifetime because of this person. Uh, your spouse is going to push you. He's going to be like, babe, wh what else you need me to do? Mm -hmm. That's the type of energy I need when it comes to my business. So if you are dating someone, now you married, so you locked in. <laughs> y'all, please have that conversation with y'all spouse, y'all mate, whatever. Don't let nobody play in y'all face about y'all business. This is an amazing opportunity. And Mr. Moore can do it. And Natalie can do it. Cedric can do it. We can do it too, y'all. And we coming. Absolutely. So don't, don't please do not sleep on this business because of somebody else. That's I all I want to say. I agree. Cynthia, I would, I, I, just from the outside looking in, I think you need to have another serious conversation with your husband and ask him, what is his expectation? What is it that he wants you to do? Because that may be, you know, may not be clear. You may be assuming that is one thing, but get him to come straight out, be transparent and say, what is it that you expect me to do? And hear what he has to say, you know? And then I would also be having a conversation with him about where do the two of you together want your family to be five years from now? Hear what his goals are for the family. You share what your goals are for the family because you gotta first make sure y'all are on the same page and y'all want the same thing. It's like, and I can only speak for me, me and my husband, we probably don't agree on a lot of things, but the one main thing we agree on is where we wanna be with our family for the future. So we both locked in when it comes to, okay, this business is gonna be what we are gonna use to get us to where we want our family to be. So it, it would be the communication, Cynthia, I think that, and, and he could be just frustrated with you because y'all haven't had that conversation. You just going off and doing what you wanna do and he's not feeling included. You know, men have fragile egos. And remember, a man's job is to provide and protect. And so if you're taking the lead on the provide part, because maybe what he's bringing in is not meeting your needs, he might be feeling some kind of way about that. So I would just say, you know, have a conversation. Let's go to Director Burke. I'd love to get a husband's uh, point of view on this. Y'all want to hear from Director Burke on this? Yes, I was going to say, is there a husband on here that can speak <laughs> on this? I was going to say that. Yes, I was. Is it, let's hear from the husband. 
Director Burke, the floor is yours, sir. Everybody hear me? Yes. I was listening to this on Facebook, you know, because I had something else to do, but then I hopped on when you guys were talking about the men, so I, I have to put in my point of view here. So um, when Tanisha first came to me about this business opportunity, and she sat me and Jace down at the table and explained, well, I'm going to do this for a family. I'm going to do that. I'm going to do this. And keep in mind, we were in the middle of the struggle. We were in the middle of the struggle. So she's saying all this stuff. And to tell you the truth, me and Jace were like, okay, whatever, whatever, whatever. You know, um, but then she went out and did it. She went out and did it because she understood that she knew that if she didn't do it, there was going to be issues between us. You know, and that's one thing I love about her is the fact that before she really started rolling this thing, she just sat us down and told us that this was what was going to be. Like, for instance, she said, I'm going to get our family to the next level. And as a man, I'm not going to lie, guys, that, that, that hurt. But she said I wasn't doing enough, but she also said it wasn't just me. It was her, too. You know, so she didn't put the onus on me. She said, I know we're working hard. We're doing our jobs, but not doing enough so i'm going to take lead here and i'm going to get us to this next level and the stuff that she said that we were going to be doing like living our best life being able to travel all around the world this and that of course at the time i didn't i thought it was a joke really i thought it was a joke but you know i'm gonna humor my wife okay whatever whatever you want to do because you know you said that you're going to get our family to the next level but like I said, in the next, what was it, eight months, she was the evidence, the execution in this. Now, this is what would have happened if she didn't do what she said she was going to do. There would have been a lot of problems between me and her, a lot of problems. It couldn't have been no, oh, I'm on a Zoom now. But you're not bringing anything in. You're taking time away from me. And as a man, you know, we want our women right there by our side. So if you have the audacity to come up to us and tell us, hey, I'm taking time away from you to do this thing. You have to produce. You have to produce. That's all there is to it. That's all there is to it. So all that, oh, I'm on a Zoom now, no, forget that. Oh, I'm on a call now, no, forget that. I'm going to, no, forget that. It's like, then I'm going to say, you need to choose between this business and me. That's, that's you know, that's what's going to happen. You know, and if you want to choose this business, fine. I'm gonna take my feelings. I'm gonna go. go. But the fact that Tanisha understood the uh, work and the role with this, and my feelings, because she, you guys are right, we do have fragile eagles. We, we do, but we've been taught that we got to be the protectors. We got to be the ones that bring in the bacon all the time. You know what I'm saying? And that is a role that if you don't do as a man. You are looked down on by other men. You are looked down on by other men. And another thing that you look down on is like allowing your wife to take the lead in the family. I still have people in my family that look down on me. You know, but hey, look at where we're at right now. <laughs> I'm fine following Tanisha in this business. Hey, okay, you do your thing. And at times I've even explained to the men in my family, like, hey, she, she's the boss. Whatever she says we're going to go, we're going because look, it's proven, it's documented. She did it. She did it. So, ladies, if your man isn't coming to the table, whatever, in this business uh, with you, you have to look at what you're producing in absence of your time. You know, it, it may not, it may be a lot of it is money, but it may be something else. You know, so you have to have that conversation beforehand. And you have to be straight up and honest with them. That's what Tanisha was. She's like, I'm going to do this. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do this. And okay, all right, let's see you do it. Let's see you do it. You want to take my role? You want to pay all the bills? You know, you want to lead this family into the next few? Go ahead. Let's see what you got. But you have to come quick. Not playing around. Anything like that, you have to bring it. And I mean bring it fast. Because when it comes to us and our egos, if you don't bring it fast enough, oh, yeah, there's going to be problems. There's going to be issues. Thank you, Ms. Tanisha. I love it. I love it. And I, I think you helped some of the ladies here. Uh, Director Short, go ahead. I see your hand up. Yes. I, I, I respect and I love that point of view 
that he gave from a husband. So basically what he was saying is, is you producing? I wanted to ask her, like, I think it was Cynthia, like, mm -hmm. are you producing? Are you meeting the goals that you set for yourself? Because that is, if you say you on Zoom, you on Zoom, what, what money coming in? Is money Zooming in? Like, so I, I respect that. So I like that, that, Director Burke. Thank you for that. You're welcome. And let me say this, um, at convent, no, it wasn't, it wasn't convention, it was boot camp. And uh, there was a young lady who made the comment, this is what I heard, she didn't say it to me, but she had made a comment to someone that her husband was basically livid that she was at boot camp. And she had been in the business for three years, if I'm not mistaken, Director Burke, you can confirm this, right? And she was only a silver builder, right? She wasn't even gold yet. Yeah, and she asked me to speak to her husband. She's like, I need you to talk to my husband because I need him to be like you when it comes to supporting me in this business. And that's the first thing I asked her. I asked her, all right, so where are you at in this business? She's like, well, I'm a silver builder. How long have you been in the business? And she's like, I've been in the business three years. And I actually had to say, what do you want me to say? You want me to say that? there's nothing I can say to him that's going to make this right because you're not bringing in the money to, uh, that sacrifices his time with you. There's, there's got to be something there for him to like, okay, well, you know, my wife is taking some time away from me, but hey, she's bringing in the money. When the money comes in, everybody falls in line. Everybody falls in line. That's what me and Jace did. When Tanisha started bringing in the money, we we're like, yes, ma'am, what, what do we need to do? You need to cook, okay? Make sure you get a plate, okay? You need to clean, okay? Make sure everything's fine for you, okay? Not disturb you on your calls or your Zooms, okay? Yes, man, it was like affirmative. <laughs> it was like military in that house because she she proved it. She proved it and she went out there and became the evidence execution. So when this girl came up to me, want me to talk to her husband, I'm like, there's nothing I can say to him because he's right, he's right. You're not producing in three years. You're just a silver builder. It's like he has every right to be mad. There's nothing I can say to him that's going to quell this situation. It's, it's not going to happen. You have to produce. You have to produce now, immediately, or else this this situation is going to get worse. And what it does, it shows the found, it shows the roots or the cracks in the foundation of your marriage. That's what's going to do. You know, the more you keep rolling like this slow and steady, it's, it's just going to get worse. And she understood that. And she said, okay, I'm, I'm going to make a difference. I'm going to get rolling in this business. I'm like, yeah, that's the best thing you can do. All right, go ahead. Yeah. Right. Thank you. Thank you. Absolutely. And let me say this. This is going to step on somebody's toes. And here goes another uh coffee break that we ain't hit the topic we were supposed to hit so we will get back to that on thursday but y'all know how we roll with coffee break right whatever if this is where the spirit is going to lead us this is what we're going to talk about but um and this and i can tell this is a very responsible topic that is helping not just married people but single people um so i don't know i need to y'all type in the chat what should i call the topic of this zoom um when i post it to uh, my YouTube channel. So I need a topic for this, for today's session. But I will say this. And like I said, I'm going to step on somebody's toes. This is going to be a gut check for some of you. You should, there is absolutely no reason, aside from you getting in your own way, that you should not hit one star director within your first year of working the business. That is a very realistic goal. That if you come in day one, you're coachable, you're teachable, you're reachable, you're using the PS3, you're being consistent, you show up for your success. I promise you, you can hit director within your first 12 months. So if you've been in the business multiple years and you haven't hit director, it's because you haven't been doing what you're supposed to do, not because the business is not working for you, it's you not working the business. And so, yes, when you have then your spouses not on board, it's because you saying, hey, hubby, wife, I'm going out hunting. 
I'm going to be away from you. You ain't going to get enough nookie. I'm not going to be cooking. I'm not going to be cleaning. I'm not going to be, I need you to do all that. I'm going out hunting. And then you don't bring home the deer. There's going to be problems, period. You better bring home the deer. And when you don't, they see you as disrespecting them. Disres you don't care about the family. You don't care about them. You out here playing, having a good time with your girlfriends and your and your business. Your new sisters you made in the business. Your new broskies you made in the business. You got to bring home the deer. Mr. Burke, you know you got the floor. That's exactly right. What, what's great about women, man's point of view, is that we can get into something like this. You know, we can take our time. You know, we may not, you know, um, come out on top or anything like that. And you women will still love us. And you're still like, yeah, it's okay, baby. You know, you'll give us another chance. Hey, no worries, no worries. I know you'll do better. And you guys have patience. You guys have the utmost amount of patience. And I love that. Reverse, man, we don't have patience. Especially if you're going to be taking your time away from us. It's like there's got to be something in return for that. You know, and if you are going out doing this, doing stuff like this, going to meetings, talking to people and everything, and you're not producing, there's a lot of stuff that goes in through our heads. And you know, when my wife first started, I'm like, why is she always on the phone with Greg Scott? Who the hell is this Greg Scott dude? True story. Be he was jealous my of my sponsor. <laughs> and and it's like I'm, I'm like saying to her after it's like, who is this Greg Scott? Dude? And it's like, what, what's going on with this? Well, he's just my sponsor, and it's like, no, 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 there's something going, you know. And that's weird. But then when the money starts coming on, you know, oh, Greg's a cool guy. He's pretty cool. You know, that that's what you guys think, man. But but yeah. It's like all kinds of stuff goes through our head and what will happen if you don't bring in that bacon and it's just going to get worse. It's going to get worse. And I don't, because as a guy, each of us, we have, I mean, we could be down for our women doing this thing. And everything, we only have so much patience, so much patience. Some guys have absolutely no patience at all. None. You know, and so if you if you're getting this and you've already been in a relationship, the best thing, just like Tanisha said, is to have that hard on heart, have that discussion with your man. This is what I'm going to do. Let him know that this is how this is going to be for 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 a while. There's going to be a sacrifice, you know. But guys, the definition of a sacrifice is a short term discomfort or a long term benefit. You have to let them know that, okay, this is going to be hard, but first, but I'm telling you, I'm going to get us to another level. And once you say that and you get their buy-in, oh, I can't stress it enough. You have to put in the work and you have to do it fast. Yes, there's got to be something that, whoa, man, she's moving. She's moving. And likewise, if you're a single woman and you got new guys coming at you and everything, you got to let them know what your life is. And let them know, like, hey, this business is the priority. This is the way it is. You're going to feel bad because you're a second to it. Understand it. But trust me, it's like, if you want to be in my life, I need to get my life to a certain point. And if you if you stay there with me, man, you're going to be able to experience everything. Everything. You know, it gets better. It'll get worse before it gets better. But trust me, stick and stay. You know, we always say stick and stay to get the pay. Yeah, it's the same thing here. As a as a woman with a new man, it's like you gotta let them know this here is a priority in your life. All right, back to you, Mr. Burke. All right, so now let me get my uh, perspective on that. If you single, you ain't allowed to date until you hit your level. You need to secure that legacy because I want you to be with somebody because you want to be with them and because they add a benefit to your life, but not because you shouldn't even have time to be all booed up. Real talk, cause you're, cause that's that that new relationship is gonna be a distraction, and you, I need y'all focus on getting the bag right now. You can get the D later. Y'all catch that later. 
A real talk. I'm just saying, y'all ain't got time for that. Cause yeah, and and be and let me say this. Really, it's out of respect for the guy. Because when you get into a new relationship, it requires you to have undivided attention with each other. And when you're in this business, you just really, especially when you gunning for a directorship, you just don't have the time to put into that relationship. And if you do make all that time to put into the relationship, that means you're not putting the time in the business that you need to, to hit directorship. So I would advise until you hit director, don't you don't need to be in no relationship right now. You're already complaining you ain't got time because of this and you ain't got time because of that. Don't add more to it because then that's just going to be self-sabotage. Karen, that's just my point of view. Well, I agree with your point of view 100% because I'm here to tell you, I've had three relationships while I was in this business and they went south because of this business and I'm because I'm about my business and it just you're right it wasn't fair it wasn't what was that it's something about a request from the meeting host what do you need you need something Tanisha no you good go ahead okay something popped up on my screen well yeah it, you're right it's not fair to the guy you know and one of them he was in a network marketing business another one I was in this one and he we going to do that thing well you join mine I join yours we'll help each other that didn't work that it don't work so no we, it doesn't work now the other um network marketing business I was in before this one I was in with my husband and we worked it together uh, well let me just say he he worked it I was traveling and he was booking all the travel because I was at a job that had me traveling at least twice a month and I just said just make sure I have a hotel a car and a plane ticket and he did that and obviously he was, you know, recruiting people to, I didn't know what was going on. And then he died. And I didn't know what was happening. All I know was the checks kept coming. And I'm like, well, what is going on? I, he's dead. I'm on bereavement. I'm not traveling. How is this happening? And that's how I got involved with this business because that was the other business that Donald Bradley and I were, was, he was in. I kept watching him, kept saying, I want to be in his or his team. And when Mike Gallon called me and told me he started one, woo, it was game over. But yeah, no dating. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Um, and you know, that was a good lesson, Karen. So thank you for sharing that. I'm sorry that you lost your husband, but that 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 right there is a very big teaching moment. He passed away, but the money was still coming in. That's why you don't need to have a boo right now. You got to get the money. And too many people stay in relationships due to finances, which is not the reason to be in a relationship. So I rather for all my single ladies, I want you to have all the money you need to support yourself without a man. And then this way, the next man that you do choose, it'll be because he's adding value to your life not that you need him to add zeros to your bank account all right any closing comments so was today a good anybody get some value out of today can we get let me get four takeaways from today's session who wants to share just come off mute delta I always have problems with the mute button. Why? I do not know. But I want to say I am single, but to have this conversation, it showed me the direction to stay in my lane. It showed me the direction that I need to go, what I need to concentrate on. And yes, you know, get to that level that I need to get to, to secure my future. So like you said, I don't have to depend because unfortunately there are a lot that may be in, in, the, in our business that do is in a relationship, not even possibly for love, it's in because of the money situation. And I do, I, I, I have a phrase that I say sometimes as far as relationship wise, I'm my own self-sufficient black woman. Well, I don't want it to just be a statement. Let me put action behind it. So I say, thank you. Yes, definitely. But I say, thank you for 
your intuitiveness in being married and sharing that and definitely thanking your husband for sharing that because when I do get to that level, I'll know what to be expecting as far as in, within that individual and not, you know, do it because like you said, of value, not out of need. Because if you do it out of need, you put yourself in a bad situation. So I say thank you. Absolutely. And I definitely thank you so much, Mr. Burke. You added a lot of value to our conversation today. Um, coming from a male perspective, that's really going to be a blessing to a lot of people. You shared something that I couldn't share no matter what, because I'm not a man, I'm not a husband. Um, so I just want you to know how much value you brought to Coffee Break today. So I know the ladies appreciate it. Um, I want to thank you, ladies. You know, uh, for this for this conversation, and one thing I got uh, took away from it is the fact that you feel that all single ladies just need to stay single while they're in this business, and then the man comes out. I, I agree with that. So, like, well, you know, unless there's like a guy like me, you know, it's like <laughs> this is a fine. You gotta have, you gotta have. But at least I would say if it's gotta be like that. Have the conversation with him first. Have the conversation with him first, and you never know. Absolutely. Yeah, thank you. That's a great takeaway. Yeah, definitely stay single, work your business, and then bring in a man. At least it's a value to you as to how you want to proceed with it. So, yeah. Absolutely. Amira? Okay, so especially coming off of last night, because <laughs> we talked last night, and I was I was can you share wrong. can you share a little bit just to give some background as much as you're comfortable with sharing? Okay, so I'm gonna say this. So I wanna do this real quick. Uh, Director Burke had this, this classic coffee break where she scolded us on not being professional and not being prepared. And that kicked me right in the butt yesterday because if I was prepared the way I was supposed to be, I wouldn't even have gotten so pissed off the way that I was last night. But anyway, that's a whole nother thing, lesson learned. Thank you very much. Um, but last night, um, we, I was supposed to use the car and the car wasn't, um, wasn't brought to me in time. And we only had one vehicle and I wasn't able to make what I was supposed, I wasn't able to make a very important um engagement that was really important to me and i wasn't able to make it because of that and i flew off the handle i i mean she I, she brought me back in she brought me back in but I, I i did i ran around for a little bit and i acted up a little bit i stopped though and i apologize so um but it makes me think about how many times i've actually went out and done something went to a meeting went to a convention went to do whatever I wanted, whatever I needed to do, how many calls. Remember, I said, I have the culture of a stay-at-home mom. I have the culture of a work-from-home mom. This is how I set my environment. So how many times have I gone out or I missed something or I was on a call or I was stayed up late for a meeting? And, and he looked at me and he said, you know what? You know, when are you, when is my turn? When is this going to happen? When is that going to happen? And now I see based on direct Shout out to Director Burke. Thank you so much for sharing this. Because now I can see that, well, maybe I'm just not moving fast. Maybe he thinks I am just dilly dallying. Maybe he thinks that I'm not putting, following up with my promises. Maybe, you know, you know, Director Burke says, you know, this is the, this is the work. This is the PS3 is the work. Whatever else you're doing, it's not the work. Well, yeah, that's cool. That's pretty. You do what you got to do, make your post, whatever. But the PS3 is the work. How many people did you speak to that? That's the question. How many three-way calls do we have scheduled today? That's the question. Do the work. And if they don't buy in, they don't buy in. But you need to get them on here. You need to get them present. You need to show them. Show. How many times did you show today? Like, what's going on? And I think that that, just even me, the little reports that I give them, hey, they buy talk to this many people. He hears me on the phone talking to people. He sees me messaging people. Are you networking now? Yeah, I made three new connections. I have an event to go to now, and I'm going to meet this many people. Oh, I gave my card out at the Burger King. I did just like, he sees me moving. So he knows it's going to come. But in the meantime, it's like, okay, well, where's my time? Because I still ain't got no check yet. Where's my time? Because I still ain't got So this was really, really helpful for me because nobody's going to take your, your, your business as serious as you, as you do. But 
they will take it serious when they start seeing results. So that always say, so this, that, that actually really helped me. And I might have to go and apologize again and give another hug again because I did cut up last night. Yeah, but you need I'm to like, do that yeah. because tomorrow's your anniversary. <laughs> yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. I'm going to do it. I'm going to have to do a lot of apologizing. <laughs> but yeah, like we, <laughs> but yeah, we're going to like, it, it definitely made a big difference for me. And it really gave me a, a helpful different perspective that has nothing to do with that just has, has to do with the communication. Basically, keeping your word. Keep your word. Your word keep is your word. bond. You, you know we from New York. Your word is your bond. Can't stop. Won't stop. Let's go. I got it. I'm thanks. Talk to you. All right. Uh, uh, <laughs> Benita? Good evening, everyone. I just want to say um, thank you to your husband, Director Burt, because... Now I have a clear understanding of how my husband feel because he said, um, I had, let me see, rewind. Um, before I started the business, I was kept on asking him that I want to come and um, join this business. And he was like, no, we don't have the money yet. So I'm like, okay. So I keep on seeing my, um, my sponsor, my coach. I see the level that she was kept on going, going, going. So I asked him again because he was the breadwinner because I'm an early retiree. And I needed the credit card of his. So I was just keep on asking, asking. So I let him see her one day of her growth. Then he said that night he gave me the card. I ran with it, but I didn't do nothing for a couple of months. So then he was like, well, I thought you said you were so excited. He said, but you're so busy surrounding. You got to slow that down before you can do this. So when Sunday come and my, I had talked to my pastor about certain auxiliaries that I needed to step down. And then he was like, did you pray, pray about it? And I'm like, so then when he called and told me, we talked, so I stepped down. My husband got upset. Like, you ain't bringing no money in for the business. So why are you stepping down the church? I'm like, oh, have mercy. He ripped me apart, but that's fine. So then I said, okay, I'm, I, I have on shade because I had laser surgery, so I can't see nothing uh, right now. Um, but to hear what you said, Mr. Burke, it's like now I understand because like at the convention, he said, now, come on, make my money. So you ain't pipping me yet. I am because I invest in you. You're going to bring that money in. But he is so like he's my cheerleader on there. So he was like, I know you can do it because when you set your mind on to something, you can do it. But you have so much distraction around because everybody rely on you. Now you got to put that. You got to pump your brakes and do this. So now I understand, Mr. Burke, you don't know how it gave me a clear understanding of how my husband feel. And I just want to say thank you because not all men can say what you say. And now I understand more. So it feel like I'm back in convention because I just asked him um, before he left to go to work, are you going to convention next year? He said, yes. So I know that he can't sign up yet because of certain reason, because he, uh, for a husband, because somebody explained to me more. But when I tell you he's on fire, he's on fire worth worse than me. So I just want to say thank you again that you was able to say what you said, because like I said, not all men can say what you said. So kudos to you. And you still say, keep on telling everybody that because a lot of us and men need to hear that. A lot of us wife and men need to hear how you and Director Burke's y'all relationship and how you understood. And don't make you no less of a man because you know sometimes y'all got that pride on your shoulder. Um, but you, you didn't, it's what you said that a lot of men need to hear that and make you like you know less of a man. You just know that this is where the money at and she can do that. And the love that y'all have, that y'all talk, because me and my husband, we did talk too. That's why I, I'm able to get into this um, job opportunity, but I was still not doing what I need to do. And now I understand why he acted the way he did, because like, I didn't produce nothing. Absolutely. Absolutely. I didn't produce nothing. And I'm, I, and I'm a woman enough to say that I did not produce nothing. So now I know why he felt that way. So now I'm tightening up the belt. Here we go. Mr. Burke. So, Mrs. Burke, so I thank you, really. Awesome. I really awesome. thank you. 
Remember, for every action, there's a reaction. That's true. Right. Erica, I see your hand up. Thank you for sharing, Medita. Um, yes. Yeah, so I want to say that a convention hit different for me. And when we talk about being a single woman, I came back from convention and the guys that I had on my roster when I left, they were not getting return phone calls. They're like, oh, you're so busy. And they said, oh, I don't have time for you, especially after I saw the, the posture of the men at convention. I was like, wait a minute. They look a little different. They smell a little different. <laughs> <laughs> I, I got time for, for, for what I love, what I had, what I was doing before I left. But I think uh, the biggest takeaway was positioning myself before I do start to date again. And the real reality that you can't hit one star in your first year. I'm really struggling. Like, I'll, I'll do it and I'll be on fire. And then it wouldn't go how I planned. And so then I'm like, well, it's okay. You're not going anywhere. Just take your time. But no, it, you can hit a goal within that first year that you that you want for yourself. And then do that. And then the other goals that you have for yourself can come into fruitation. But right now, this business um, has to be a top priority. And, and the guys, they'll get, they'll, my dad told me last night, he's like, well, don't give up on it. I was like, wait a minute. Even up on anything, I just have to focus on other things because I have a child that I have to provide for. I have to make sure that I'm good. So, thank you for that. Thank you for the reminder that it's okay to go ahead and put that to the side and, and focus on what I need to focus on for my business. Absolutely, absolutely. And for those of you again who have been in the business for a while, let's not beat ourselves up. We we that's the past. The three, four, five, six years behind it's. But look at where you are now and what you can accomplish over the next 12 months. Let, let this be the start of your new year and let, let's get this done. Let's get this, let's secure this legacy within the next 12 months. Focus on that. Don't focus on, oh, she's right, I should have. No, we, we can't cry over spilt milk. It's gone, that time is gone, you can't get it back. But when you know better, you do better. And let me also say this, there is nothing more sexy than a man that's goal driven. And so Erica, I, I thank you for sharing what you shared because you write when I when I go into an event and I see the men of Planet Marketing, I am like so proud. I'm like, they suited, booted, mindset. And it may it should for you single women, make you want to step up your standards for who does get the opportunity to court you in the future. And it should make you reflect, not, not, don't stay there, just reflect, right? Let's reflect like a, a quick look back on the poor choices you made before and say, I'm not going to do that again. I got, yeah, he was fine, but, or he was the bad boy, but being a bad boy ain't sexy no more. The new bad boy got a lot of zeros in his bank account with commas. Like, I want y'all to step up your dating game is what I'm saying. Start asking the questions you should have asked before, like, what's your credit score? What's your debt to income ratio? Do you have any appreciating assets? Or do you got that hood mentality? I'm driving a, a Benz, but I live in a project. It's like, those are like flags y'all should be looking at. Where you live? <laughs> I'm just saying. All right, I ain't gonna get into that because it's already 19 minutes past our time. Uh, Karen, last comment. Oh, my last comment is, you said don't beat yourself up. I already did that Saturday. Saturday, we had an event here in Detroit and we had the first uh, director that made Detroit. She she moved to Atlanta, but she came back. And so we everybody was here and I was just listening to people getting in the business this month. I mean, I'm sorry, this year, 
and you know already at Gold Builder, already at DIT, already getting ready. And I'm like, what am I doing? What am I not doing enough of? And I had a heart to heart with my team, and and we're we're right. I, I already had the good cry, but now it's going forward, going forward because we're talking about one star director. They already said, and I know you know as a director, two star is what you need to be going for. Nobody is going to recognize any one star directors at convention that's coming up. It's going to start at two star. So we've got work to do. And we ain't got time for no men folk to be doing it. We, we <laughs> gonna... <laughs> Absolutely. Director Short. Yes. Um, where the hell do you been in Detroit at? I've been trying to find the wee man in Detroit. I would love to show up. I'm here, right here. Y'all need to connect and exchange oh. phone numbers. Yeah. yeah, let me what's your name on here? I'm about to inbox you my number. Here, Karen K. Rush. Direct okay, I'm about to send you my number. Excellent. I love it. I love it. Well, thank you everyone for uh wait, y'all didn't tell me what are we calling this coffee break? I need a subject title. How to handle family support. Okay. Man up and man out. Ooh, ooh, or know your man position. Up and man out. That would make or know me your position. really curious. Man up or man out. Ooh, that's that's or good. know your Director position. Short. Director Short, your hand is up, or was that an accident? Accident, sir. Oh, okay. All right. I like that. I like that. I'll probably combine the two with the family support. Maybe with a subtitle, <laughs> bring home the money, sis. I like that divorce. <laughs> All right, so that concludes virtual coffee break today. Again, if you have not watched week two, I mean, week four training video, get that done. And we will hit that topic on Thursday for support uh, for week four of the uh, boot camp 40 days, 40 nights. All right, y'all have an amazing day. See you later. Love you. Have a blessed day. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.